So, Stephen, who is this or what is this designer in your view? In, in my view, the, the designer is God. Okay, but uh, David, David's. Point, I don't know if our guys at Discovery hit you about this or not. But, but how do we how do we case? test for God? Science okay. can not. I'm test not saying we God. can test. For, I'm not saying but we can test for God. Then ID can't but, be a science uh, because but, you, we can test for the process. Well, you've, made, you've made a jump in logic. You've made a jump in logic. No, you've made a jump in logic. You can test for intelligence. Hold, hold on. Hold okay. on. We'll get to okay. questions later. Give us a chance. I wonder if we could give that heckler a round of applause for making the evening more memorable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, no, uh, no. Whatever you clear. say, we're not going to box. We're, we like each other. Yeah. It ain't going to happen. But if you're here for red meat, I'm sorry. We're vegetarians. We're vegetarians. <laughs> um, let me address this in context of what David wrote this morning. Okay. The theory of intelligent design holds that an intelligent cause can. It's explain. not a theory can explain certain things. Okay. And the reason that we say that is that there are certain key features in, based on our cause and effect structure of the world that we know only intelligence can build. One of those is digital code. So when we find digital code in the cell, we think that it is a warranted inference to, to infer that there was a prior intelligence. Now, we don't claim to be able to know from the scientific evidence the identity of the designer. The, the scientific methods of design detection that have been developed by people like William Dembski in his book Design Inference with Cambridge Press enable us to infer to an intelligence. We do this all the time, by the way. If you're an archaeologist and you see inscriptions in the Rosetta Stone, you infer that it was a scribe, not wind and erosion. Um, there, are, there are criteria that enable us to detect intelligent cause. And Except with the Rosetta Stone, and we know who, who the me, author me, was. We know that it was a, me, a human carving. Give me one second, Peter. The, the, Which point, is just... the point is we're not, claiming, we're not claiming from the scientific evidence to be able to know that the designer is God. I understand. Okay? But from a... so, it's a, so, so Peter's made a jump here, when, it's saying that ID is not testable. We're not claiming the thing he says is, is not testable. We're only claiming that... The, that the presence of an intelligence versus an undirected process is detectable and testable with okay. scientific Peter's methods. Peter's going to blow the course, I, course, so I believe in punctuated equilibrium. Thank you. So, Peter, so so Peter, so Peter what do you make of the Cambrian explosion? Do you, do you hold oh. a polyphyletic or a monophyletic view of the history of life? You know, I was hoping we'd get to that. And one of the really wonderful things that we do compare is Cambrian explosion. Uh, I've been up to the Burge of Shale. And one of the real interesting things about the Burj of Shale is that the damn Canadians control it so tightly. Are there any Canadians here? <laughs> <laughs> a little too late hey, now on that I was, one. I was a landed immigrant. <laughs> Richard Nixon was not going to kill me. But I came back. And what I'd like you to know is I've been up to the, the Burj of Shale. And what happened there is that you have to carry out all your own waste. So all the scientists who go up there get a tin can with your name on it. So anything that you produce, you bring back down out there with you. Steve Gould was up there, and not only did he have to carry out his own waste, he had to be carried up on a sedan chair and came back again. But it's an amazing place for understanding, I mean, this view of life and this grandeur of life. Now, what's so spectacular is the Berkshire Shale was really thought to be the only window, the only real window into the past so we could get soft-parted creatures. But a fantastic new place, as you know, Shenzhen in China, we now have another window 10 million years prior to the Burgess. The same sort of preservation where not only the fossils, not only their hard parts, but soft parts are preserved. And lo and behold, they're less evolved than the Burgess. It's a two-part snapshot. If you ever want the most fabulous reaffirmation that evolution took place, you just look at the Burgess and look at Shenzhen. And I think you have a tremendous sense of a tree going back towards its roots. Evolution is writ large in almost biblical proportions, excuse me, if you go out and look at the rock record. I, I disagree with the assessment. I've also been to the top. We got a big kick out of it. My, I took my son. Oh, and your, it, your he, cans? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the fact that we made it back down and Steve Gould had to be airlifted <laughs> off, you know, we <laughs> did. Uh, but uh, it, a couple of years ago, we sponsored one of the leading uh, Chinese paleontologists in your, in your department to come speak in your department, uh, J.Y. Chen. And uh, uh, I, I, I dispute your assessment that you have lesser complexity at the base of the explosion. The, the Chengjiang fossils are beautifully preserved. Oh, they are. 
the, and you have trilobites. Where they've now discovered fishes there in. Yeah, but what I'm saying, they're less. The, the lobopods, for instance. Let's go into lobopods. You've got far more, far more complex in the Burgess than you're changing. You, Evolution has increased diversity. It has increased you, complexity. You have this, the, you have some animals that are less complex because they weren't known before. No, okay, but, trust, but, me this, the, Steven, the, trust me on this, Stephen. Trust me on this. You no, can't no, trust me on this. I've written on this too. No, 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 no. You can't go there with. Anyway, change. Uh, J.Y. Chen is at your department, and he doesn't accept the tree picture. He says it's upside down. You get the major diversification, major innovation of form right from the base of the Cambrian. <laughs> and uh, that's not an argument, that's a gesture. No in case mind. you've not taken logic. Uh, and uh, afterwards, he was, uh, he's, very, he's very skeptical of, of uh, universal common descent. Yes, that's one. And now I can cite a hundred who absolutely and, uh, disagree with him. He, he was asked, uh, uh, you're, you're, so, you're so skeptical about, about the standard Darwinian doctrine of universal common descent. He said, well, in my country, he says, you can question Darwin, but you can't question the government. He says, in this country, you can question the government, but you can't question Darwinism. Well, <laughs> let's... All right. I want to. Uh, I want to go. What's Darwinism? Well, we, it's I think the, we've the been through that. The conjunct of universal common descent and the theory of natural selection and random mutation. I think we've been through that. Let me let me go back to God for a second, since some folks at Discovery think I'm obsessed with a question. Here's what's difficult for me to wrap my head around, and and I think Peter was, was going to this. If if the designer is unnamed, but nearly all the advocates say that in their religious view it's God but that's not a scientific view. I mean, there's very few advocates of intelligent design who, who name a designer other than God, correct? Um, there are a few that, that uh, are religiously agnostic, like Michael Denton or the Buddhist Jeffrey Schwartz, the neuroscientist at, University of, uh, at UCLA, uh, Berlinski, who is sympathetic to design but not a proponent, uh, is, is agnostic religiously. So uh, the, and, and I think some interesting other examples, not from our camp, but uh, from the evolutionary world of evolutionary biology would be people like uh, uh, Fred Hoyle, Chandra Wakramasin, and even Francis Crick, who speculated that life had been designed and transported here from yeah. outer space, the so-called panspermia theory. So uh, there are other options. And that's, that's one of the – we're not trying to be sneaky. I think one of the things we objected to about your article is it kind of – it slightly hinted that we were being disingenuous no, in this. I and maybe you didn't mean that. I, don't, but, I certainly didn't mean disingenuous. Some people but, have said it directly. You but, guys are being sneaky. Yeah, no, no. And, and, well, the judge said it. We were the being judge sneaky. said it in yeah. Dover. But uh, we're just it, trying to – it's, it's the opposite, though, David. We're just trying to be careful about what the science says, what it Im implies, what it points to. Now, am I going to separate you two? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but let me just – uh, yeah. I'll give you a chance we on this, too, Peter. We see evidence of an intelligence, but it is a second-order philosophical question as to the nature and identity of that in intelligence. When you see gene sequences that function like software code, you can see but, mine but you understand work, how people but, – But there's no signature. There's, there, there's, there, there's, it doesn't say made by anyone. I understand, but you, you have – the, the majority of the fellows say God is the designer. You have funders who have openly stated religious uh, uh, positions and agendas and, and, and want to promote that. And it really becomes a small little piece of middle ground then to say it's been designed. We're not going to say by who. The people with the money, the people getting the money have, have an answer to that. It just seems like a shrinking piece well, to try to, to maintain sure. the non named designer, right? We're interested in evidence and arguments, okay? And we think the evidence strongly supports the reality of a prior designing intelligence. We don't go further in identifying the designer on the basis that? of science. How do you test that? How do you test that? In how some of the ways that I mentioned previously. Science cannot test the supernatural, and that's what it you're having. Test it for cannot an test for the supernatural. It. Science just cannot deal with what you want it to go. If Therefore, it is not Science. If your argument was true, Peter, then we would not be able to test the conclusion that the Rosetta Stone had been made by an intelligent agent rather than a, a wind and erosion. Oh, that's crap. <laughs> uh, we, we, <clears throat> I, that, that again was not an argument. Um, 